This could be quite an adventure with how tired she is. Time to play with hats and get on our way. They're also talking on stage about... Thank you. Fresh as a daisy. Sorry for all the traffic noise, we're right by the highway here. It's now about 7.30 in the morning. I got up and moved the car back to the supercharger. Looks like we lost about 10% overnight keeping the car warm. So I'm just trying to get that back, warm the battery up, get it up around 90% for the next leg of our trip. All in all, it was an okay night. The logistics didn't quite lay out how I expected. I figured uh, Joan would sleep in the little area and I'd sleep in the, in the long area, but she wanted to snuggle up with me. So uh, I was kind of pinned against the door. It was funny. It was good and funny, but uh, not the most restful night, but I think I got a good four to, four to five hours of sleep, which was nice. There are some other trucks parked here. Uh, looks like they're doing a windmill install. Driver's getting some sleep too. This isn't a great stop. I guess there's a subway and a McDonald's here, but the restrooms aren't great. They don't have a, a baby changing station. But we do have a beautiful sunrise coming up in the east. Looking forward to another good day of road tripping. We're in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Uh, I think our next stop is in Texas, so we're making good time. We had kind of a long breakfast stop, but that was on us. We're charged way beyond what we needed to, but we had a good breakfast. Um, it's the only place around here. There's a Freddy's Steakhouse across the street, but I don't think it's open this early in the morning. But we're about to get going, so... Time to play with hats and get on our way. It's 12.30 and we are in Denton, Texas. We way overcharged at the last one, so we only need a few minutes here. Enough time to change pants and uh, do a potty break and get back on the road. Joan just had a little nap on the way, so hopefully she's feeling a little better. The temperature's up to 51 degrees, so it's much more pleasant and uh, nice and sunny out, so we get to enjoy that. The supercharger's in the middle of a big mall uh, all sorts of restaurants, hotels and everything around, uh, Walmart and Sam's Club and nice area, lots around. We're not going to spend much time here. Due to some diaper and Walmart issues, that quick stop in Denton turned into almost an hour. Previous day, we'd met folks from Minnesota headed to Fully Charged Live. Hi, Paul and Chris. So I knew as we got closer, the superchargers would start to fill up with travelers. Waco was the first time we saw lines, and I guess it was thick most of the evening. Luckily, when we arrived in Waco, we were only third in line. By the time we left, there were eight cars waiting. The Teslas were cycling through relatively fast, which is more than I can say for the slow traffic and construction zones from Waco to Austin. Austin Supercharger is really tucked away and narrow, but once you're in, it's fine. Here again, I think it was experiencing way more traffic than usual. There were a couple of restaurants nearby, but nothing that seemed real kid-friendly, especially when that kid and her dad were grimy from the road. Luckily, we had snacks in the car to tide us over until we got to the hotel. After a good night's sleep, we were up and rolling again to the Circuit of the Americas racetrack. The parking lot looked like an EV delivery center. 
there were several Tesla shuttle vehicles taking small groups in, but with the stroller, Joan and I opted for the bus. It was a beautiful morning, and even with a long line, everyone was excited and enthusiastic for things to kick off. filled with the roar of engines as the regular track cars were doing their laps throughout the weekend. Joan and I spent some time watching them and appreciating the speed and skill of the drivers and enjoyed walking down pit row. The volume did get old after a while though. Given Joan's proclivity for loud outbursts, we started the day in the outside area checking out the band, food trucks, and sponsored vehicles. Chevy had their 2020 Bolt on display and were offering test drives. It's a nice, capable car with a respectable range of 259 miles for $36,600. Lots of staff in their booth with good info on their battery tech and some demos. Audi was a huge test drive hit with long lines each day to drive the e-tron. I believe they had three on site, one for their booth and two for drives. The 204 mile range isn't great for a base price of almost $75,000 but it seems like a really good standard Audi SUV that just happens to run on a different fuel. Tesla doesn't advertise, so officially they weren't there, but one of the owner's groups was there and giving test rides in each of the three available models. In a nearby display vehicle area, there were a lot of original Tesla Roadsters. I think a couple people may have had rides in them, but it wasn't a standard thing. It was really cool to see them all there though. If Tesla did advertise, this would have been the perfect place to showcase the Model Y, Next Gen Roadster, Semi, and even the Cybertruck. The crowds would have gone crazy over any or all of these. Some other notable absences were Jaguar's I-Pace, the Kia e-Niro, the Hyundai Kona, and Ford's Mach-E. I talked to a couple people who were really hoping to see the Ford and the Model Y at the event. However, I get the sense that even the organizers didn't expect this much interest in Fully Charged Live, and the sold-out weekend isn't an opportunity the manufacturers could have anticipated. The big hit by far was the first booth through the gates. Rivian had both their truck and SUV on site, and it was almost impossible to see the vehicles through the sea of people. Lots of reps and designers were in attendance to answer questions, and Joan loved hanging out on the giant chairs in their booth. They aim to start production this year, and it will be interesting to see where the final specs and price point wind up. But there should be no doubt that there is incredible buzz and excitement about these vehicles. And up close they look amazing and much bigger than I expected. They're going to turn a lot of heads when they're on the road. There's more to come from Fully Charged Live, including EV conversions, Porsche, Harley Davidson, and more road trip. So tune in next time as we work through our frunk full of diapers.